spirit of Encounter Truth. Today we're going to expose the unfolding communist revolution in Connecticut. You wouldn't believe it, but Connecticut is one of the most communist controlled states in the Union. This is for my friends up there. It's a beautiful state and I wish you didn't have to put up with this. But even if you're not from Connecticut, I think you'll learn something from this. So please stay tuned. So like the show, spread it round, let people know what we're doing. We've got to stop the revolution in America. Well, Connecticut is just not very far away from New York. So the communists filtered down there. They settled in Connecticut. They really took over New Haven. They're strong in Hartford. They've got a lot of strength in the unions in Connecticut. Unions will hold rallies across four cities in Connecticut. It's called the Working People Rally. In the Working Families Party, in the Democratic Party, they have connections to almost all of the leading figures in Connecticut. And I think they drive most of the policy. I think the Communist Party is why Connecticut is one of the most highly taxed states in the union why its budget is imploding while the state is in extreme distress. Connecticut is losing revenue. There's been a decline in income tax payments and withholdings. Payments have been delayed because so many people are unemployed. I put it right back at the Communist Party and its influence. So what do I mean? Well, I want to go through some of the top communists in Connecticut to let people know who they are, some of the front groups they work on, then show you a pictorial display of these communists with some of your leading officials. You'll be shocked at how much they're connected. Now, the Connecticut Communist Party works through a few fronts. One of them is the Connecticut Alliance for Retired Americans. This is an AFL-CIO affiliate, and in the state of Connecticut, it's almost completely run by communists. It is their front. Uh, they also are strong in the Working Families Party. They also run the New Haven Peace Council, which is affiliated to the US Peace Council, which is affiliated to the World Peace Council, which is a Soviet front. It works as now controlled largely by Cuban and Greek communists, but is one of the, the main uh, world communist front groups, if not the main communist front group today. And its job is basically to propagandize against the US military and US military alliances and strengthen Russia, China, and all the enemies of America um, by disarming this country. So some of the top communists in Connecticut, well, I'm gonna start right at the top. That's Joelle Fishman. She's been in the party since the 70s at least. Her father, George, and her mother, Eddie, both longtime Communist Party members. She's a red diaper baby. She was brought up in the party. Now, she's undoubtedly the head of the Communist Party in Connecticut, and she also serves on the Communist Party National Political Committee. She's the head of it, the Political Action Committee. So her job is to liaise with the Democratic Party and move the Democratic Party as far left as she can. That's a very, very senior position. She's one of the most dangerous subversives in the country. And you look at her, she looks like anybody's grandmother. But she's extremely dedicated, a very convinced communist, and has done lots of damage to this country. I joined the Communist Party as a teen during the upsurge of the 1960s to end white supremacy, the war against Vietnam, and win union rights. In the Communist Party, I found a home that not only struggles day to day, but has a vision for a better future. The brutality of Trumpism threatens to turn back all the rights fought for and won during the freedom struggle so far. That's why I'm proud to be all in with the Communist Party to organize a massive and united voter turnout in the historic 2020 elections. The time is now to end exploitation and structural racism and guarantee health care, housing, education, social security, living wage jobs, equality, and peace with climate justice as basic human rights. Let's dump Trump and organize together to put people and planet before profits. My name is Joelle Fishman and I endorse hashtag vote against fascism. She is married to a man called Art Perlow. He's an economist. He was at Yale, I believe. Works with her on the, on the um, Connecticut Alliance for Retired Americans, etc. His father was Victor Perlo, a bona fide Soviet spy during World War II working in the government in Washington, head of a major Soviet spy ring. 
So his son is now helping to lead the Connecticut Communist Party. You've also got in New Haven, Henry Lowendorf, a long-time Communist Party member, very, very active in the New Haven Peace Council. Also, you have the Reverend Scott Marks, a long-time Pentecostal minister who now runs uh, New Haven Rising, which is populated by young Communist League people. It's basically a front for the Communist Party. Now, I can't say Scott Marks has a party card, but he's attended Communist Party religious conferences. He's a regular at Communist Party events. His kids hang around with the Young Communist League. If he doesn't hold a party card, he's at least a very deep Communist Party sympathiser. And yet it's not surprising that a reverend would be in the Communist Party. The Communist Party has many pastors in its ranks. They deliberately recruit pastors because the church is a very influential body and they want the influence. Over in um, Hartford, you have also have a strong branch, not as, not as strong as um, not, not as strong as New Haven, but it's pretty strong. And that's led by a guy called Wynne Heimer. The ex-military guy, he's deep into the Communist Party, also a leader of the Connecticut Alliance for Retired Americans. And you also have Tom Connolly, another longtime communist, who is also involved in CARA. So it's one of their main fronts. Now, in, Connecticut, in the, the headquarters of the Connecticut Communist Party is at Howe Street, New Haven. It's the, the uh, New Haven People's Centre. And this is where the communism is organised from. This is where everything happens. I regard it as the capital of Connecticut. I think more happens there to affect life of the people of Connecticut than happens at the official state capital, to be honest. The current governor of Connecticut is, of course, Ned Lamont. And here's a little picture of Ned marching arm in arm with Reverend Scott Marks. And here's another picture of Governor Lamont marching also with Scott Marks. Now here he is with Communist Party leader Wynne Heimer. And there's another picture of him with Wynne Heimer. He is very close to the Connecticut Communist Party, as was his predecessor, Daniel Malloy. Now, it's not surprising that Ned Lamont would want to hang around with communists from time to time, because his uncle, Corliss Lamont, was one of the top communists in America at its peak. Back in the 40s and 50s, he was a leader of the American Soviet Friendship Society, very active in Communist Party causes. He denied he was a Communist Party member, but he was identified in several hearings as an actual party member. So that's Ned's uncle. Call us Lamont. Well, sir, now, uh, in order to couch your views properly, sir, is it true to say, we you mentioned that you were one of the Americans who was generally friendly toward Soviet Union. Now, you made several trips to, to Russia, didn't you, during the 30s? I made two trips, Mr. Huey, in 1932 and 1938. Uh, now, and, and during that, that period, uh, you were one of the Americans who thought that there was something enormously hopeful for mankind going on in Russia. That's right, but I was never an apologist for them. I always saw the mistakes and the evils in the Soviet Union. It seems to me that any country has both it, its good and bad sides, and that's certainly true of Russia. Now, the senators... Richard Blumenthal, the senior senator from Connecticut. Well, here he is with Winheimer. You know, he's good, obviously, uh, uh, got a bit of a connection there. Here he is again with Winheimer. So he has no problems hanging around with communists. He goes to many of their um, seminars, many of their events. He hangs around with them quite a lot but not as much as his partner, the junior senator from Connecticut, Chris Murphy. Now, you remember Chris Murphy? He was going on and on and on about Trump connected to Russia. He was leading the charge, Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia. You, you tweeted this public comment, and you were briefed on the intelligence here, that there is evidence of a giant, quoting from you, multi-year effort to help Trump in 2020 by Russia. What can you tell us about that? Well, what I can tell you is that it's much bigger and bolder and smarter than it was in 2016. Uh, the Russians have learned, uh, and they are now trying to use U.S. persons and uh, fake websites in order to uh, proffer a narrative that helps President Trump's re-election. Well, it just turns out that Chris is a little bit of a hypocrite. Here he is, um, as you'll see, uh, with Communist Party member Wynne Heimer, 
and Communist Party supporters Ruth Tulin Sion and Marilyn Tisker. Here he is with Henry Lowendorf, and if you look over his shoulder, there's Joel Fishman. Here he is with Wynne Hymer of the Connecticut Alliance for Retired Americans. And here he is with Reverend Scott Marks. And here he is again with Marilyn Tisker and Wynne Hymer. Now, for several years, while he was abusing President Trump, um, <laughs> Senator Murphy actually had a Communist Party member on his staff as his outreach director, a young man called Maxwell Goldman. Max Goldman, a Communist Party member, was serving on Chris Murphy's staff. Now, we need to understand that the Communist Party USA was once loyal to the Soviet Union, but now it is loyal to China. Don't get me wrong, it's still connected to the Russian Communist Party, but now it's loyal to China. So Chris Murphy, who was attacking Trump, had a member of the Communist Party on his staff, a member of a, of a party that is loyal to both the Communist Party of Russia and to the Communist Party of China. Was that a little bit of a security risk? You know, so Chris Murphy was serving at the time on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He's one of their top men. Do you think his activities would be of some interest to the Communist Party? And nobody thinks that having a Communist on the staff is a problem. Now here's John Larson of Connecticut's 1st Congressional District. Connecticut has five Congress members. Here he is with Wynn Hymer. Here he is with Wynn again. And here's Tom Connolly of the Hartford Connecticut Party holding up a sign campaigning for this man. The part of the power that the Communist Party has is that it runs campaigns to elect these people. And so if you are elected by the Communist Party, you will tend to listen to them when they come to your door wanting some policy proposals adopted or wanting you to do something or wanting you to get some funding directed their way. For instance, the Connecticut Communist Party headquarters, the New Haven uh, People Center, has had massive state grants directed to them. They get a lot of money from the state. And here's Jim Himes of Connecticut's 4th District. Now, Jim was elected, so the Communist Party says, with their help. Now, Jim did his thesis as a young man on the Nicaraguan Sandinistas self-defense units. These are the, were the sort of spy force of the Nicaraguan Sandinistas, who were pro-Soviet communists. So these were the people who would watch the neighborhood to make sure nobody was doing anything the party wouldn't approve of. And Jim Himes thought these were very good organizations. And this man serves on the Intelligence Committee in the House of Representatives. What could possibly go wrong with that? Now here is Joe Courtney of Connecticut's second district, a very long term time serving congressman. Now here he is with uh, bracing his good friend, Communist Party member Tom Connolly. And here he is with Wynne Hymer, who calls him his friend. And here he is with Wynne Hymer and Joel Fishman and Joel's mother, Edie Fishman, also a communist. Well, what could be a problem with this? Now, Joe Courtney serves on the Armed Services Committee, overseeing the U.S. military, specializing in the submarine subcommittee because Connecticut builds submarines. Well, the Chinese are challenging the American Navy in the Pacific right now. Is it a good idea for a man serving on the Armed Services Committee to be hanging around with pro-Chinese communists? Can you see a possible problem as a little bit of a security risk here? And here's Johanna Hayes from the Connecticut's 5th Congressional District. Now, she's a newbie. I think she's just been re-elected once. Teacher of the Year, very photogenic, very popular person. Well, she hasn't had a lot of time to get working with the Communists yet, but um, she was elected with the help of a man called Len Yanniali, a Communist Party member who worked in her office, wrote letters supporting her, you know, just... just publicizing her, very much helped to get her elected. Here is the Connecticut Alliance for Retired Americans outside Johanna Hayes's office, and she writes a little note saying how she just can't wait to work with the Connecticut Alliance. She wants to cooperate with them. This is a Communist Party front, and she should know that. Everybody else on the left in Connecticut knows that, and it's hard to imagine that she does not. 
Now here's the best one of all. This is Rosa Delaro of Connecticut's 3rd District. She's been working with the Communist Party for at least 15 years. So why should that be a problem? Well, it just turns out that Rosa Delaro is probably the third ranking Democrat in the House, I believe. She works with Nancy Pelosi, allocating positions. I mean, allocating who's going to serve on what committee in the Congress. That's an extremely important post. And here, as you will see, she is a long-time friend and supporter of Joel Fishman of the Communist Party's Political Action Committee, the part of the Communist Party that, that liaises with the Democratic Party to get what it wants. So here you see, back in, I think, 2011, you have Rosa Delaro speaking at the New, New Haven People Center, the Communist Party headquarters. Here she is. You can just see uh, Winheimer there embracing her very good friend, Joel Fishman. Here she is with another Communist Party supporter, Celestino Cordova. Here she is with a bona fide Communist Party member and labor union official, Blair Bertaccini. And here she is in Cuba in 2011 with a whole bunch of other congressional um, Congress members with a woman called Portia Siegelbaum having a little meal together. Well, Portia Siegelbaum is a longtime Communist Party USA member. She married a Cuban. She lives in Cuba. She does some work for CBS News, but she also works for Radio Havana. She's effectively a Cuban agent. Back in 2012, one of the top Connecticut communists, a man called Al Mada, celebrated his 90th birthday. He's been active in the Communist Party since the 50s, and they decided to hold a big birthday bash for him. So they have a host celebrations committee. Rosa Delaro's on that committee. So are several uh, Connecticut state reps. Alderman from New Haven. The Communist Party runs the New Haven Board of, of Alders. Tony Harp, the former mayor of Connecticut, was very much a Communist Party sympathizer as well. And she's on the host committee. And then you have Craig Gautier of the Communist Party, Henry Lowendorf, Reverend Scott Marks, and Jarvis Tyner of the head office of the Communist Party in New York. So here they are all are serving on this host committee together to celebrate the 90th birthday of this top Connecticut communist. Well, this, this man, Al Mada is the leader of the New Haven Peace Council. He's very active in the World Peace Council. He travels all over the world to basically sell America out. And here he is with Henry Lowendorf in Moscow in 2015. They're there to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the victory over fascism, meaning the victory over Nazi Germany. And here's Al Mada on stage at a Communist Party event, just about to get hugged by Gennady Zuganov, the head of the Russian Communist Party. So this is how deep communism has penetrated Connecticut folks. They are connected to every single one of your Congress members, both of your senators, your governor, your previous governor, the previous mayor of um, New Haven, a whole bunch of the olders in New Haven, and um, a whole bunch of your state representatives. The Communist Party, I believe, is more powerful than the Democratic Party in Connecticut. And it's probably two to 300 members at maximum. But it's organized, it's focused, it's disciplined, it's funded, and it's very serious about revolution. So I hope living in Connecticut, you now have a little bit more of an understanding of why your state suffers the way it does. It suffers because your Democrats are in bed with the Communists and your Republican Party doesn't know it and doesn't know how to fight back against it. So I hope you found this interesting, folks. You need to get rid of the Communist Party in Connecticut, people, and you can do it by exposing them. Send this video to every conservative, every Republican, every Democrat you know in the state. Everybody needs to know how influential the Communist Party is. Only then can it be stopped. But this is just a microcosm of what's happening all over the country, folks. The communists are stronger in Connecticut than they are in most places. But all over the country, they're gaining similar influence in small towns, major cities. 
they are working it and remember they are working for the Chinese. They are associated, they're still supporting the Russian Communist Party, the Cuban Communist Party, the Iranian Communist Party, the Iraqi Communist Party, the Venezuelan Sandinistas. They are enemies of America and they have burrowed into your society at every single level, including little states like Connecticut. So thanks for watching folks. Please distribute this video as far and wide as you can. Um, keep on your guard. Keep up your spirits. We've got to be the counter revolution. We've got to turn this tide back. So thanks for watching. God bless America and God bless all of you. Thank you.